Hey everybody, this is Jo, and I'm here in my Houston, Texas garden, and I'm in zone 9A. And before I show you around my garden today, I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, everybody that has subscribed and that watches. I just started this little uh, YouTube channel knowing nothing about YouTube uh, for the three people I thought might want to see it. And so the fact that you watch and that you uh, leave me sweet comments, I just really appreciate it. And it's very kind of you. Um, and I'm very excited that, that other people want to see my garden. I know I want to see your gardens. Um, of course, here's Miss Statfire. She heard me speaking and came over, didn't you, Pumpkin? Well, I know I gave a, already gave a, a little tour already this week, but it was really just roses, and there is so much going on. You can see it's, it, spring has arrived, and I am so excited, and I could make a six-hour video and show you everything. Anyway, I thought I would make another shorter video and uh, show you other things that aren't really roses, although I can't promise I won't show you a rose if I walk past it. Oh, case in point, there's uh, excellent Von Schubert is looking very pretty. Um, it would look so much better um, and fuller if I had pruned it in a timely manner. Um, it's so tricky in Houston. You know, they say prune on uh, Valentine's Day, but then two years ago, we had a horrible freeze a month after Valentine's Day. So it's always tricky to know when to prune your roses, I find, in Houston. And so I waited too long. And sometimes I get to some and don't get to others. I waited too long for this. And so it would be much fuller, a lot more green if I had uh, pruned it. But as soon as it's done with this first flush, I'll cut it down pretty hard. And then um, it'll come back out with some green leaves. And, and it usually reblooms pretty quickly. All right, that's my, that's my rose for the day. Here we go. So I've got some wonderful cone flowers. This one is just about finished. It looks really terrible right now, but that is one of my favorites. That's called Echinacea pallida, also uh, called um, pale purple cone flower. And um, it's one of my favorite little things. This is um, called Echinacea pretty parasols. And it was such a winner last year. I'm hoping it comes back really strong this year. And then I have another one I'll show you um, in a minute. Now I've moved the pot that was here. I swapped it out um, because it had gomfrina. Some must have self-seeded or something. There's a little tiny bit of it left. But I didn't realize that gomfrina really will uh, act like a perennial. Maybe it is a perennial and comes back. I kind of thought it was an annual. And so, I noticed how good it was looking at the bottom. That's the pot there. I cut it all the way down and it's got lots of little green growth in the bottom. Um, but it was really a stop gap uh, in the, in the uh, summer when I had a, a Budlia die on me. So that's the replacement Budlia that's just looking pretty good. Um, and when that gets big, I'll move this. But right here, there's really, there's not a lot of color right here in the middle all of my through no great design all the color is sort of along the edge right here in early spring all along that edge and then in the, the flower pots but there's not a lot of color in the middle which is why i just took a, a colancho a pot of colanchos and popped it in here to give a little oomph in the middle and then this is one of my favorite areas so this is going to be a pale purple budlia and then i have this under a cage so i don't step on it this is agastache tutti frutti um, that was so spectacular. It was about five or six feet tall um, last year, and it, it was just unbelievable. And I bought two more. They haven't come in the mail yet. Um, and then I've got carrots right here that'll have a big, tall, white flower. And so between the pale uh, lilac there, the hot pink, the white, and then this white, which has a little bit of pink in it, and I'm not sure how many of these uh, pink ones, all pink, will come up, but we'll, we'll see. I've got a new rose bush there. And then this is a pink um, salvia that I put in last year. I haven't really grown that variety. I've forgotten the name of it. Um, I'm hoping it does nicely. It's sort of new to me. Um, and so it looks really good right now. I'm hoping that it will look, good, look great, you know, all year. I've got lots of little, um, all of this black and blue salvia is coming back. And you can see I've left my little hollow stems for next year's insects, next winter's insects, and it won't be another 
you know, 10 days before that's grown and you won't be able to see any of those um, little, little sticks that are, that are um, sticking out. And um, this is uh, Caldwell pink that I, uh, I trimmed that back really hard um, and it's bouncing back very nicely. This is the funny thing in the yard that's cracking me up. I had a Cleome uh, sprout in the fall and so it was, you know, maybe 10 inches tall. Right before Christmas, we have had one big freeze and that's it in my yard. It's only gotten below zero, below 32. Um, it's only gotten below 32 one time. It was about three days worth of cold weather right before Christmas. And after that, we haven't had any freezes, which is why everything is so far, you know, so far up and going. Um, I just covered this with some leaves and then I think I put a plastic flower pot maybe over the top and it survived that, you know, three day freeze. And so, you know, it's friends are, there's some over here that are like three inches tall. I think I've got another one over here, this one right here, you know, that's 12 inches tall. And then I've got this four foot tall getting ready to bloom Cleom. It's right in the middle and it's gonna look kind of silly, but that's okay. <laughs> We don't mind. This mound is uh, just a, a native Texas and probably native to most of the United States uh, wildflower called um, evening primrose. Evening primrose, is that right? And they're just blooming today and they're so sweet, but they can be invasive. So I'm kind of you know, pulling it out as I go. Um, my grasses have come back really nicely. I mentioned a while back that I, you know, I didn't, I could have cut these all the way to the ground, um, but there are little creatures and little insects that are living down in here. And I saw no real reason to disturb them. It doesn't bother me for it to be, you know, for me to leave it 18 inches high and let it come from that. It'll still be gorgeous. And so I kind of did the same thing here. It doesn't look quite as pretty right now, but it'll fill in. And then the same thing, this is that um, Gulf Coast muley grass. It's native, has beautiful pink inflorescences. And you know, you can cut it to the ground. You can just leave it, it was really pretty. Um, but I decided to kind of, you know, split the difference and trim it. And so now I have these funny little balls, but it'll, it'll fluff back out and be great. I can see there's already new growth, you know, popping out. Well, here's what I'm super, super disappointed in is, um, this is Salvia Big Blue that, you know, is a perennial, it should come back just fine, especially after, you know, three days of freezing weather. This one's bounced back. You know, I, I just covered it with some leaves, just a light covering of dry leaves before the freeze. This one looks great, but this one and that one and that one, and there's one sort of tucked in there, look terrible. I'm just really disappointed that they are not, you know, coming back full force like this one is. And so, um, oh, here's Miss Dapper. Are you helping yourself to the creatures? So silly. What are you doing? <laughs> This is a big uh, patch of Peter's Purple Monarda, and I'm hoping that that will uh, be a fantastic punch of hot pink in a couple of, oh, probably another two months. Um, I have pinched it back, so hopefully that pinching back will double the uh, number of blooms that I have on it. And I did a little um, short. One of the things, uh, you know, old lady Joe, I don't know how, you know, YouTube works. And so I've just discovered Y'all are gonna laugh at me. I've just discovered that there is a community tab and there is a little, all these things called shorts. And so I have started in the last couple of weeks to put up just photographs in the community tab, um, which is kind of fun. And then I've just this week learned how to put up shorts, which is a 60 second video. Everybody I'm talking to already knows this, except for like the one other person like me who still has an AOL account and doesn't know these things. So, um, I hope you'll go look at those things. And I did a little short about how to, what it means to pinch back. And so if you're a super new gardener, um, you might learn uh, a little something from me about pinching back. I've got carrots. All my little Texas blue bonnets have come up. There's one random purple one I love. I've got delphiniums. Uh, this is fennel. And then I'm not sure what that is. That's, I have those here and there and I, I really don't know what it is that's coming up. And then there's some Amy. That little bit is Amy. 
there. And then let's see, where shall I go next? Let me climb back through. Here's another one of those little kooky things. I don't have a clue what that's gonna be. And then here you can see it more little teeny tiny. Um, that's a Cleum also, just like the four foot tall one I have. And then this is, you know, I talked about uh, in another video about figuring out what a weed is and learning your seedlings. I thought this was going to be a, um, a cone flower, and now I'm realizing it's not the leaf. I was really looking at that part of the leaf. And so I think it's just some kind of, um, uh, oh, uh, just a weed. I can't quite think. Maybe yellow flowers. What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to let it bloom because I really don't know. I threw out a lot of seeds this year, so I really don't know uh, what that's going to turn out to be. Oh, I'm just seeing this. This is a larkspur, and I can see it's just now getting a little bit of a of a bud on it. I just have a couple. I didn't have good luck. I have had very bad luck with larkspurs. I'm very excited when, you know, just two or three come up. I'm thrilled. Let's see if I can get through back through here. Oh, now I planted a million, million, million poppy seeds in the fall when you're supposed to plant poppy seeds in Houston. I think one came up. I will show it to you. I'm very excited about it. But I swear none of the other ones came up. Maybe two or three. I planted these like up six weeks ago. I had left in the packet. I thought, well, nothing's coming up. I'll put these in there. And look, they've all come up. And so maybe I'll just have one kind of poppy. And look, here's a little cluster. They must have sort of washed down. Look at that. I'm so excited. I hope it doesn't get too hot. Um, before they bloom. Uh, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Here's some self-seeded parsley. And then here's one of those things. It's, it's the one that's gotten biggest. It's got this flat, uh, looks like it's going to be a, you know, a flat topped flower. Is that called an umbral? I'm not sure. Um, but I still don't know what that is. Is that another kind of ammy? I don't think it's a carrot because I planted whole carrots. I don't know what that is. You can watch along with me and see what on earth that turns out to be. And then I've got this, the fennel here for swallowtails and it's already gone to seed and it's so pretty. And then this is, I mean, this is a weed except, you know, in, in Texas and Houston gardens, you, you just can't, it's too hot. You can't grow those little bitty um, geraniums like the sort of wild geraniums. And so this popped up you know, I think it's a weed, but it's a geranium. I looked and it's a little geranium. It's called a Carolina geranium or something. I'm so excited. So I left it. I mean, it's just a weed, but it's pretty. Here's the fennel. Look at that. That's crazy. And so this is uh, much older. This I grew from seed. I think this was from last year. Um, and then I've got an empty spot. I've got peppers. I bought them for uh, to grow from seed and they're not doing well. I bought peppers today. I'm going to admit to you, I went to the garden center again today. Uh, this is um, the other cone flower that's doing well. That's called Pow Wow Wildberry. And, and I really am pleased with that. And I've got a couple going. Oh, my irises. It's the only kind of iris that doesn't really hate me. I don't know what kind of iris it is. Um, these were here when we moved in and um, they bloom every year, sometimes more than others. Um, but if you know what kind of iris that is, please let me know. I'm very, I'm um, always happy to see them. Give you a little bit of a view. Here's a funny little salvia that um, I love and see all over Texas and other people's gardens and it looks fabulous. And this is, you know, I've probably bought I can't imagine how many times I've bought this and tried to grow it. I think this was, this is one plant. I think this is one of five plants that have all died. Um, and this is also newly dead. And that's a Salvia gregii. Um, but I think it looks a little bit like, I can't think of what kind of lavender is that color. Um, like French lavender? Anyway, I love it. And I feel like it looks a little bit like lavender. It's too wet. I have found it to be too wet in Houston to grow lavender. I have tried and tried. There are people who know how. Um, I am not one of those people. I 
have quite a bare spot that's got one cone flower that's doing well. I think that those are sort of the remnants of some cone flowers. That is a self-seeded um, uh, milkweed, I think. But, and I had these wonderful, I just loved them, uh, Coreopsis moonbeam here, pale yellow. And they've all, they had green at the bottom a couple weeks ago, even 10 days ago. And now neither one of them have any green. So there's gonna be an empty spot. I bought these at the store because I can't stop myself. And so I may or may not put them there. I haven't really decided. I have a tendency to buy things that I get excited about with nowhere to put them. I'm sure y'all have never done that. Um, I moved all of my pansies that were on the driveway. I moved them all over here into this. This is really still in the shade, this last step. And uh, it just is, it's too hot. It's already 88 um, here. So it was just too hot uh, for those pansies. They weren't making it. Again at the store, I bought more colanchos. These are the teeny tiny ones, little, little bitty that do well. Um, I bought a new one there. This one, I bought one. Oh, this is a little miniature. It's blooming a lot later. It's just now setting buds um, than the other colanchos that I have that are all in, in full flower. My little Texas blue bonnets I'm so happy with. And I've got just a couple of those little little larkspur coming up. And then this, I think, is called cudweed. It's just a, a you know, it's, it's just a sort of invasive weed, but it is a butterfly host. I think it might be a butterfly host for painted lady butterflies. I'm not really sure. I'd have to look it up. But I've dug up some and put it uh, sort of not in the middle of the gravel. And I'll probably dig this up um, as well. These are doing really well. These are the, the um, lance leaf coreopsis that were supposed to be pale yellow and be allowed in my uh, garden. And they, they're darker than I wanted them to be, but they look so pretty. And so they will be allowed to stay even though they're a little bit too yellow for my taste. And, um, oh, this is all my milkweed. It's coming up, it's blooming underneath um, all this organza. I'm, I've got these bags on here to keep the uh, resident monarchs off of them. I'm waiting for the um, migrating monarchs to come through. And it's sort of starting in you know South Texas. Somebody said um, on my butterfly group that kind of starts saying they kind of start coming through Galveston and so um, I'm hoping that I can uncover those and have nice uh, monarchs coming coming through I have an early bloomer here this is a big red oh look at that little lizard down in there hey buddy hey bud scared him to death here this is a big red amaryllis that was my mom's um, and <laughs> He's sort of on his own, but uh, uh, these are fantastic. They are fantastic every year. Oh, this video is getting longer and longer. I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Oh, look at this. Foxglove in Houston. I just buy those in the fall and let them overwinter, plant it in the garden, and then they will bloom until it gets blazing hot and then that's it. I'll pull them up. I just grow them as an annual. I have no explanation for why this little dude is blooming and none of the other ones have even any sign of a bloom stalk. So, you know, it, this is gardening right here. Why is this blooming and none of those are, why is that one, why is that one single amaryllis shooting up a giant stalk and none of the other ones have come through yet. You just never, you never know with gardening. Oh, here's one of the other things. It's kind of closed up for the night. This is a wine cup. This is another little uh, wildflower that I have here. Um, this is its first flower and uh, I love it. And so, yay, yay. Here I've got a 
bunch of native stuff that just looks so good. So back that floaty little small leaves behind the irises, that is a Walter's Viburnum. It's already bloomed. I hoped it would bloom more than it has, or uh, but it bloomed all winter. And so I haven't really grown it in more than, I mean, really in the last year. And so um, it looks like maybe it blooms a lot in the fall and in the winter and then the very spring and beginning of spring and then maybe that's it. But that looks so pretty. I've got these, these are native ferns that are looking so good. I've got a native uh, fall aster. This is a native fall um, obedient plant. And then I've got in here, I don't know if this is native or not, but it is a butterfly host. This is a butterfly host too. Um, this is called pigeonberry and it has sweet little pink flowers. It, it doesn't grow well for me, but I want to have some just in case. Um, I'd love to have clouds and clouds of little pink flowers, but if I've got enough for some butterflies to host on it, you know, that's good enough for me. I've got, this is, uh, now we keep stepping on it and it'll fluff up if we all stop stepping on it. This is frog fruit, which is a, a butterfly host as well. And it's a really great ground cover. Um, it can be a little bit um, pushy, but um, it has little white flowers. And, um, and I'm thinking about trying to uh, take a piece of lawn in my front yard and make it ground cover and put this there. And, um, and I'm not gonna ask the Neighborhood Association. If you're watching this video and you're on my Neighborhood Association, I'm counting on you to keep, it, keep your lip, zip, lip zipped. You're probably not, I'm probably safe. I love these, they're fabulous, they're wonderful. The other thing I've got back here, this is a native little plant I put in a little while ago. That's a coral berry and it seems super happy back here and that will have red berries that birds will eat. And then I bought this coleus. I've never been a big fan of coleus until last year and I really love the hot pink. I don't really, uh, the hot pink is my favorite one and I'm hoping that this one will get really big and maybe puff out through this, you know, old, um, little whatever it is garden obelisk or something but I'm, I'm hoping that that will work out it needs shade this is certainly pretty shady back here so I'm hoping that that will look cool back there and get big if it only gets 12 inches tall I'm gonna be in trouble but the tag does not say how tall it will get I have no idea I finally got a, tr a native tree in now I'm still waiting for my native tree we had them taken out we had the stump ground all the things in the front yard this thing went faster because we didn't have to grind a stump. This is a wax myrtle. It is native to Texas. It has blue berries that birds like to eat. And what I'll do is I, I'm letting it settle in, but eventually I will I will take you know it's, I will take a bunch of you can see down there a lot of trunks, big trunks, and then little um, little branches. And so I am going to take out a bunch of the little branches and lift the crown so that it is like a multi-trunked tree. And it will probably, they grow quickly. And we trimmed a bunch of this up here to get us enough light to really even grow that. And so my guess is it's gonna get tall looking for the light. And so it will be sort of block the view of the neighbor's house and maybe even a little bit of their garage and be a really cool tree back here. And I've got oh, all my little um, self-seeded um, four o'clocks. They're hot pink. I'm very happy that they have just popped right back up without any interference from me. That's a native um, oak leaf hydrangea, which is doing really nicely. It's very new in the ground, and so I'm glad it seems happy. This is a bunch of shrimp plant here. And then this is a native um, Turk's cap. If you are looking for a shade plant uh, that can take basically full shade, it can take sun also, but take full shade, full shade this is for you. Um, and it comes in a couple of different colors. Red, which I, this is so big, we've just left it. It's kind of hard to dig up. It's not my favorite color, but this is sort of a coral pink and it's really beautiful. Um, and it's as tough as nails, and it's a native plant to Texas if you're looking for that. Now, while we were getting the trees trimmed, I said to the dudes, I didn't have this little cage here. I said, this is a new plant. Don't step on it. And he said, yes, ma'am. And then they stepped on it. 
So this is called Sweet Henry. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. Oh, good. Look, look, look. It's not dead. You can see my little green on there. It's he Henry Sweet Spire or something like that. And um, it will have um, really pretty bronze um, leaves in the fall and um, be kind of bushy. And I think it gets about three feet tall. And um, I'm excited about I'm glad to see that it's not completely dead from the... Uh, very very nice I won't complain there's very sweet uh, tree trimmers but clomp I'm sure the guy I told and the guy that stepped on it are different guys I'm waiting with bated breath for my American Beautyberry to pop out I know signs of life but I'm hoping and then I've got all of my Texas um, columbines which again I just uh, grow as an annual it gets so hot um, that they struggle um, I know other people will grow them um, in Houston and keep them alive all year, but that was not me. Those are the people that are probably growing lavender too. My dear friend, uh, Nancy Gay brought me some coral nymph salvia. We were in the same place. We live in different towns. We were in the same place at the same time and she brought me some. So I am tickled pink. And I've got some seed I'm going to try uh, to grow as well. But I am so tickled. And thank you, Nancy, if you are watching. The geraniums. Goodness. Goodness. Look at that. This is the one I thought wasn't even the prettiest one until this week. It's just so pretty. And it's about half and half with the, uh, the pink stripes. And then on the same plant just solid red and of course I if it was solid red I wouldn't have bought it but I love the pink stripes and here's the other one and here's this is how uh, my, uh, I turned my pots if I remembered um, every Tuesday turning Tuesday I turned the pots out here a quarter turn so that because I really get light from one direction and the rest is trees and so um, turning it um, all year, no matter where I had it in the yard, has meant that it is pretty. This was my, this was my plan, was to have it be pretty all the way around. Now one side is actually a little fuller, but that's what, uh, that was my plan, is for it to be pretty 360. And, and I, so these are so pretty. I went to the nursery today. I don't go very long, very often because it's not close to my house. I went there today and lo and behold, they had more of these ivy geraniums and they had them in a different color. And so of course, I bought some. Let's see if I can show you. If you can kind of tell the color on that. Let's see if I can get it to be in focus. So it's gonna be a pale pink. And my very last free pot from that lovely young woman that we swapped cuttings for pots. One pot left, that's what's gonna go in it. Oh, I, it, this is a long video. I'm gonna just keep going because if you're still here at minute 28, you'll last another two minutes while I show you some more butterfly host plants. I've seen pipe vine, I've seen swallowtail butterflies. I, I have to take a picture of it with a long lens to know whether it's a pipe vine swallowtail. Um, but uh, this is pipe vine that is grown for them. There's a really nice pot there. And then there's another variety of pipe vine down in here. It's been a little finicky, um, this little pointy leaf there. And then, and this one, has been fine in a pot in the ground it it doesn't do that well I think I maybe I pay it more attention in the pot I don't know but it grows really well for me in a pot I know a lot of people have it in the ground um, but th that has not turned out well for me that might be you know user error then I have another a third kind of pipe vine that is this one that actually climbs and is actually a vine that will come up and I have three and all three of them have come up and so I'm super happy I can't wait um, because they were pretty pitiful the first year they've been very slow to get going um, but now it's it's going up it's all popped up 
my wisteria, which we put up. You may have seen the wisteria saga last year uh, where it got chopped down when they put the new, tr the new fence up. Um, it's all coming. And so I'm really hoping that'll just be a big wall of purple. So I'm, my fingers are crossed on that. Oh, I've no signs of life. I have this new, um, I planted a couple of months ago, Texas redbud. And every other redbud in Houston is already blooming. And this one just has no sign of life that I can find. But when I go to the nursery, they have a Texas redbud. It is also not leafed out. So I'm hoping uh, that this one is alive and then it's going to be okay because I will be very disappointed if it doesn't make it. I'm going to end on again one of my favorite things. This is native. This is Gulf Coast Penstemon and it is so floaty and delicate and pretty and it really has bloomed all year. It sort of waxes and wanes. It'll kind of go just green for a while and then it'll shoot up more uh, flowers and once it gets established you know you can see this is one big plant and then look how great these plants look and then there's another one blooming in the back in the back the newer ones they kind of you know, they take a little while um, to establish that one's been in the ground probably three months uh, not granted that means I planted it in the middle of winter but um, and that one too but once they get going, they get really big and beautiful. And so, you know, I highly recommend if you can find Gulf Coast Penstemon, if you are on the Gulf Coast, do it. It's fantastic. Oh, I'm going to end on this. I told you I was going to show you the one decent poppy that came up. Look how fabulous. I'm so excited about that, except I should have... 150 of those. <laughs> I bought. I spent so much money on poppy seeds, and this is all I got. Um, and so, we'll see if those little ones um, do well. If they do, I'll start planting them in January or February instead of October. Well, thanks for taking a look. It's such a long look with me. If you're still here, I know I love seeing you guys in y'all's gardens. And so I never mind a long video. So y'all are very sweet to indulge me by watching this video. I hope your gardens, oh, Houston Medical Center, helicopter, always got helicopters. He waited for me to end. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a terrific week. Thanks again for watching Mrs. Doubtfire another geranium say bye-bye.